this is in the simplest coil the one turn circular move. The coil has the form of the ring. The ring radius is 100 millimeters and the wire radius is 2 millimeters. The coil carries the direct current of 1 ampere. The wire radius is much smaller than the ring radius, so we can utilize the analytical solution and compare our results against it. Let's start quick field and simulate the problem from scratch. So I create the new problem. The loop. The problem type is magnetostatics as we have the direct current in the coil. The model class is axisymmetric as the ring features the cylindrical symmetry. In quick field the axis of rotation is the horizontal one and you have to draw only the upper half of the cross section in the geometry model. Magnetostatics, axisymmetric. First I draw the wire cross section. It is composed from two half circle arcs. So this is the wire. Then I move the wire to its proper position. 100 millimeters above the axis of rotation. Next I should add the external air. In quick field I should limit the calculation area so I plot the external boundary. Now the geometry model is ready and I have to give the labels to specific geometry objects. Here is the air. Here is the coil. And here is the boundary. With labels I can identify geometric objects and assign physical properties. In magnetic problem I should specify magnetic properties. For the air I specify the relative magnetic permeability of the air, 1. For the coil which is made of copper, I specify magnetic permeability of 1 and I specify the field source, the total current of 1 ampere. The boundary is moved far away from the coil, so I believe the field fades to 0 there. So I set zero potential on the boundary. 
We have the model ready and the material data ready. The next important step, step is to build the finite element mesh. To do so, press the button Build Mesh. That is all. Now we are ready to solve the problem. I save all simulation files and press Solve button. Here you can see the field distribution. In the field picture you can view the field lines, the vectors, the color map of different values. You can also plot contours to view the field distribution along these contours and calculate integral values. Let's build a contour to view the field distribution along the axis. Here I click the edge to build the contour along them. This is my contour. Now I press the XY plot button to see the flux distribution. You see that the field values and the flux distribution is not very smooth. That's because the mesh quality is not very good. Let's refine the mesh and solve the problem again. And again take a look at the flux distribution. You should know that all the pictures and data you see you can save or copy. So let's compare the field distribution on the axis with the one provided by analytical solution. I only have the calculated data in Excel. This is the analytical solution. In quick field, I switch to the table. In the table, I choose the values I need. I need the coordinate and the flux density. Now I copy all the data in the Excel sheet. I have I have to replace the decimal delimiter. On my computer the decimal delimiter is comma. It is more convenient to compare the plots, so I will add the second plot. With blue line are shown the analytical solution and with red line 
is shown the calculated values from quick field. In the difference you can see on the screen. I believe it's a good proof that quick field is a reliable tool. But let's return to quick field. With counter, we can calculate the flux for the coil. I simply plot the counter across the free space inside the coil and calculate all the flux that cross my counter. The sign of the value depends on the counter direction and the flux direction. Flux direction I can estimate if I switch on the vectors. Using the magnetic flux value I can calculate the coil inductance. You should simply divide the magnetic flux by the current value. Or I can also use the inductance wizard. The wizard is a bit more accurate. As it calculates the flux inside the wire. 